Hey guys, it's Super FBV here, back here with another video, and before we start with this, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get on into it. So today's video is about this absolute behemoth, something that's so big that it won't even fit on my entire desk. Well, it'll fit on my desk, but it just won't fit on this limited frame uh, of my desk that the camera kind of wants to capture. So, this thing is huge, this thing is ginormous. Um, I will include a tiny bit of footage in this video, but I have an entire 8 minute long clip that I uh, am going to upload uh, relatively soon. Uh, and that will, um, it, it's literally just my first uh, maiden clip that I have with Hyper Smooth on and everything. So uh, that, that'll be posted in like a couple of days. But let's get on to the subject at hand. And this is my 7 inch uh, cinematic cruising drone. And it is huge. Um, and yeah, it's ginormous. I'm going to take the propellers off actually. Uh, because these propellers are like, see, knocking stuff over. So I'm going to take the propellers off and I'll be right back. Oh man, there we go. So now it's more of a, a bearable size <laughs> without the propellers on. So uh, let's get straight on into the specs. Um, I bought the iFlight Chimera 7 frame just because I like it. It's a great frame. It's huge. It's uh, relatively compact inside there. It's got lots of features and that's that's why I chose the frame. Uh, the 2807 motors, uh, 1700 kV. I have a GPS module on the back, the VN220 module that I uh, made a review and uh, installation video on. I have a Mamba F405 stack with a 50 amp ESC and then a Rush Tank Ultimate VTX uh, with a microphone soldered onto it on the bottom. Uh, and then Tracer, just because Tracer. Oh, and the uh, Run Cam Phoenix because it's pretty nice, very nice colors on the Run Cam Phoenix. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go in much more detail um, on each of the individual parts that I used in this video um, and I'll have timestamps in the bottom or the description or whatever um, and you guys can skip through if you want a specific review on each of the individual items that I used and why I used them. So uh, let's get on into it. So I took the battery off uh, just because um, I want to talk about the frame and having a battery on top of it would be kind of obtrusive. Um, but this is the iFly Chimera 7 frame. It's huge, it's great, it's got the dead cat configuration, as you can see, that way the props are not in view of the camera. Um, and uh, yeah, they make a they make a pre-built with this frame. Uh, the pre-built is great. Uh, if you wanna go with that, it comes with Zing 2806.5 motors uh, and uh, an F7 uh, flight controller and all that. But I wanted to go relatively cheaper than that because that's about 320 340 bucks um and this uh i think the total came out to 275 with um discount codes and stuff on individual parts um and uh yeah i'll have all the parts linked in the description but i'm gonna go through one by one again uh about the frame uh and everything so the frame has uh, a dual bed kind of design right here which i was i was looking for uh when i was choosing my frame uh, i i wanted the stack to be here and the VTX to be separate. That way it gets uh, adequate cooling because I'm going to run this at the highest power possible, which is 800 milliwatts for, for the Rush Tank Ultimate. Uh, it's got uh, this little little uh, extra ridge piece to stick the camera out further. Um, that way the props aren't in view. Seeing those ginormous massive props in view while flying, uh, probably not a good idea because it will obstruct your view quite a lot. Uh, it comes with a few things. Uh, it comes with a bunch of red accented uh, 3D printed items uh, for the DJI unit. Uh, if you want to stick a huge crossfire antenna, um, the DJI antennas. Uh, and then it came with one for um, normal analog antennas as well uh, and a GPS holder. I didn't want red, so I went out and bought my own uh, 3D printed uh, parts. Yeah, uh, it also came with a little GoPro mount. This I definitely uh, am using because it's kind of cool because you can just uh, use your GoPro mount uh, and then screw it on into it. Uh, this GoPro mount is my own. Uh, <laughs> this does not come with the, the frame. Uh, but yeah, uh, enough about the frame kit uh, because uh, the frame is kind of a personal choice in my opinion. Uh, you choose the frame that you want uh, with the features that you want um for your your seven inch if you if you decide to build one uh, which i do i do i definitely recommend you guys build one because man seven inch is so powerful and just so quiet and cruisy and nice and flowy but I'm, i digress <laughs> so let's go on to the next one the next thing i want to talk about are the eyes this is the run cam phoenix uh first time actually using a run cam um other than uh on my uh on my three inch quad over there on the side uh, but uh, like 
this is a great camera actually for only $26 this is actually a steal uh, it's got great colors uh, not as much detail as I'd want it to be but it's got great colors like the colors look so fantastic uh, when you're flying in the sky especially when this is meant to be kind of a cruiser um, having those colors are just it's just amazing like you can see the sky is super blue the grass and the trees are nice uh, and uh, you know you'd be flying at a pretty high altitude uh, with this thing um, so tree branches Branches aren't super uh, that much of a worry for me so um, the detail is definitely there it's still 1200 uh, TV lines and uh, it's it's banging uh, I think this is a great camera for a relatively moderately cheap um, 7 inch cruiser because it, it, the picture that you get out of this is really pretty um, I have the Fox here T-Rex I hope I made a whole video on it that one is has much more detail but this looks um, much more colorful uh, than that one um, this has a super high contrast and super high saturation uh, built in I think if you get the Joshua Bardwell edition uh, it's got even more saturation more contrast but this is this is great um, for uh, you know if I was to ever go out to the mountains or something I'd be able to see the beautiful view even though it's analog you know you gotta you gotta remember this is analog we're talking about um, so I mean if you want to slap DJI unit onto this be my guest <laughs> but uh, yeah for analog this is a great camera um, I didn't want to go super balls to the walls uh, expensive and get another Fox or T-Rex uh, for this one and uh, uh, that's primarily because um, just because I wanted to keep this one relatively cheap because I, I, I'm not going to be using this as often so uh, that that's my choice a, far, uh, a run a run cam uh, Phoenix so the next obviously you want the uh, you want we want to talk about these motors these big honking motors these are huge these are ginormous these are the um, Emacs eco 2 line um, 2807 1700 kV motors uh, why did I go 1700 kV uh, primarily because I'm running 4S that that's like the their 4S um, KV uh, standard for um, for these uh, for these motors these specific motors they come in uh, 1300 1500 and 1700 uh, and I chose a 1700 because that's like meant for 4S uh, and uh, 1300 is meant for 6S 1500 meant for 5S but you can I'm pretty sure you can run this at, with 6S as well um, it, the the main reason you'd probably want um, a lower KV motors especially when you're comparing it to like 5 inch 5 inch motors 4s that's around 25 50 KV 24 2400 KV this is 1700 KV on 4s uh, the reason that you want a lower KV for a bigger motor and uh, is because it's able it, it'll spin a bigger prop so you're getting uh, more efficiency that way uh, there's a whole lot more science behind it that I'm not qualified to talk about the bigger the motor the better for 7 inch because you want it to be able to lug that huge battery uh, where's my battery this huge battery on there uh, some people like to actually put a 5,000 milliamp hour battery on top as well so you know uh, you want bigger motors to be able to lug those bigger uh, bigger uh, batteries like if you want size perspective here's uh, the 2807 uh, motors right next to uh, one of my tiny whoop uh, <laughs> motors it's huge um, this thing is ginormous um, and it's great like it's got a whole lot of power a whole lot of torque uh, I was barely um, above uh, uh, let's say 40% throttle uh, that's how powerful these things are. These things are great. Oh, I keep dropping this thing. Sorry. These things are great. These things are huge, ginormous motors. Um, definitely way more powerful than our five-inch quads. Because um, <laughs> I run 2306.5 and 2306 um, on my five-inch quads. This is 2807. Uh, so it's bigger in both di uh, dim dimensions. So it's it's huge. Uh, and at only fifteen dollars a motor, or fifteen, yeah, fourteen ninety nine, I believe, per motor. That's that's great. Like that's that's such a good deal because uh, this is the cheapest big motor that you can get, and it's great. It's a steal for for fourteen dollars or fifteen dollars a piece. That's a great deal if you're making your own seven inch. Um, you're getting a huge motor. You're getting a lot of power. Uh, and uh, it just, <laughs> just you know, the overall sheer size of it kind of blows your mind when you actually see it physically. Um, it's it's huge and it's great. It's very powerful, very torquey. Uh, you know, there was no problem for me to get up to high altitudes. Just bleep, the throttle above fifty percent, it's already at the moon. Like it's it's huge. Uh, these are pretty quiet motors for the price. Uh, they're kind of notchy. I'll say they are a little notchy. They're not super smooth or cinematic. Uh, like made motors, but they're they're great for my purpose, which is just rough, uh, you know, smooth cruising with hyper smooth on my GoPro, uh, and uh, just 
overall having a good time uh, going on mountains above trees, slightly long range and all that. So it's great. <laughs> I think these are great motors and I highly recommend them. Uh, and on to the next one. So for the stack, I chose to get the Mamba F405 stack with a 50 amp ESC. Uh, they offer one with a 40 amp ESC. I chose the 50 amp ESC because you are getting bigger motors uh, and that's gonna draw more amps and I, I wanted to be safe more safe than sorry I didn't want to go low too low 40 amps uh, and 50 amps seems to be at the sweet spot I'm pretty sure um, I wouldn't I, I don't think there is a necess necessity to go to 55 amp or 60 amp and kind of go overboard with it um, but uh, this is a great little stack uh, it's just, I love the Mamba stacks uh, I have the Mamba F7 stack in my main quad Mamba F4 stack F4 or 5 stack in my uh, budget quad that video is still in the works, so uh, that'll come out soon. Um, and then this, I'm on by a four or five stack again. Um, Mark two, I believe. Um, and the, the 50 amp ESC. Um, uh, there's really nothing much to talk about about the stack. It's great. Uh, it's got two spare UARTs, and then you can uh, soft serial one more UART for, uh, for uh, what is it, uh, TBS Smart Audio or, um, or uh, the other one. <laughs> I think it's great. Um, the ESC. Uh, very, very good. 50 amp ESC. Uh, that, I think that's more than enough for for these motors. Um, I'm not running it on 6s, so uh, if I was running on 6s, maybe I'd want to probably go up to 55 amp if I wanted to. Um, you don't have to. I think even at with 6s, you you should be perfectly fine. Uh, so that's my uh, that's my um, uh, flight stack uh choice and uh, yeah. uh so the next choice uh i have the rush tank ultimate uh in the bed of or the back trunk of the quad and that thing is a little beast uh it's got the four by four or the 30 by 30 uh stack mounting uh holes so uh it's perfect uh if you wanted to pick it up from here and put it on top of your stack but i wanted it to be at the bed uh that way it gets plenty of air um and it, it remains cool uh, it's, uh, I believe got 25 milliwatt mode, 200 milliwatt, 500 milliwatt, 800 milliwatt. I run around 800 milliwatt whenever I actually want to go relative distance. Uh, that's why I wanted it to be at the bed or like, uh, at the butt, of, uh, at the butt of the, um, the quad, uh, that way it gets plenty of air passing through and there's no other obstruction or no other heat generating devices at the bottom. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's my choice. I think you can go with the TBS uh unify or one of the tbs um vtx's if you wanted to uh that's completely up to you that's your choice um for my uh budgetary needs <laughs> this is great it goes up to 800 milliwatts uh reviews on this thing is great my personal opinion on this thing is great um you could see in the maiden flight that i'm going to be releasing uh relatively soon that i was able to go a fair distance not super far but a fair distance um away from myself behind buildings and stuff um, uh, and I, I, that whole video, I was having perfect video, like no breakage at all. I was on 800 milliwatts. I didn't have to be on 800 milliwatts, but that was my choice. I, I was on 800 milliwatts. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a great VTX. I think it's great for, um, for a seven inch build you can go cheaper. You can go more expensive and get the TBS one as well. Uh, and that'll get you like, I think up to one watt uh, of, uh, of power. So uh, that'll bring you a lot of juice if you really want to go long range. And uh, maybe in the future, if I decide to upgrade and I actually use this thing more often than I than I plan on, uh, then yeah. Uh, flipping on to the bo bottom of the quad, I have these little feet that I got from Amazon. Um, I didn't want to use the 3D printed ones that came with it. Um, hold up, let me go grab them. Yeah, I didn't want to use these 3D printed ones because I feel like they, they, weren't, they weren't big enough uh, of a lift off the ground. This gives me like a solid, uh, I'd say like 0.6 of an inch off the ground. Uh, and it like actually acts as like some solid support onto the ground. Uh, so that, that was one thing that I decided to add on there that I got from Amazon. I'll link that in the description uh, below as well if you want to go buy some of those. Uh, it was like two pairs uh, with for $12, I believe, or $8, I believe. Um, and it's a great value. Uh, I think I, I put these on most of my quads. Um uh, because they're just, they kind of lift it off of the ground a, lo a little bit more than I, uh, than the 3d printed ones, uh, do. I put, uh, a capacitor on there. Like I always do for every single one of my quads. Uh, this is a thousand, uh, microfarad, um, uh, 35, uh, volt, 
uh, capacitor and uh, it's great <laughs> you know I put I slap a capacitor on it pretty much everything um, you can go higher uh, voltage if you want if you're running success um, you know 50 uh, 50 volt if you want um, you don't need a bigger uh, microfarad capacitor uh, this is this will do for for my needs um, and uh, yeah and uh, for the time being I'm running tracer uh, they released an update uh, for tracer with ludicrous mode uh, it's uh, it, it's not it doesn't have a number associated with it um, you know because there's 25 milliwatt mode there's a hundred milliwatt mode and then there's ludicrous mode uh, which this one guy on YouTube was able to test and uh, was getting relatively close uh, range wise to crossfire so for the time being I'm gonna trust tracer to go relatively far uh, I'm also gonna be buying a Peter the penetrator antenna that way I get further distance and more penetration when I go through like concrete buildings or if I have to penetrate through concrete buildings or something um, and uh, yeah I think for the time being I'm gonna stick with tracer on this thing um, it's small unobtrusive and uh, and I feel like it'll get the job done because uh, I'm not a super super long range guy obviously if you want to go super super long range you go slap on crossfire you know and uh, last but not least the GoPro module uh, this is the BN220 module uh, I was thinking about getting the BN880, but then I kind of um, neglected it because I was like, I don't need the features of uh, the BN880. Uh, it's not necessary for me, but the, the 220 uh, will suffice. Um, I made a video on this whole thing on how to install and everything, so um, I'll link that as well. And the antenna, I have a Foxier Lollipop uh, 3, Foxier 3 Lollipop. Um, I'm always on RCP. Uh, I'm planning on getting a bigger antenna one that sticks out further uh, That would be preferred if you're actually going long range that way when your quads flying it's up in the air um, And uh, it's great <laughs> uh, For my purposes this works perfectly fine. So uh, last but not least I actually why well, I, I feel like I said last but not least already But this is the last but not least uh, a battery size battery uh, options. This is the AO line 45 uh, C 3300 milliamp hour battery um, and it's great. Uh, I would have preferred something more like 65 C or 100 or 75 C because 100 C is not necessarily 100 C. Uh, that's kind of a controversial thing that you can you can talk to other people about. But <laughs> um, it's a, this is a great battery actually. Uh, it gave me about nine minutes of flight time, um, nine minutes ish of flight time if I was to go super casual and cruise a little bit on lower altitude uh, probably about 10 to 11 minutes but if I was to go like pretty high up like above long uh, big trees and just kind of cruise on that altitude I'd have to throttle up a little bit higher than normal so um, that would probably be like what I was getting like about nine minutes ish um, and uh, this is great 3300 milliamp hours if I ever wanted to upgrade I would upgrade to like a 5,000 milliamp hour battery or something. A uh, great battery, uh, 40 bucks for the battery. Um, you know, it's got the XC60 connector and the balance lead. Um, great, great battery. Uh, pretty big. Uh, that's also kind of one of uh, the reasons why I bought this frame specifically because it can, you know, it can house a big battery because it's got a huge bed. Like this bed is huge. Um, I like. I don't know how to compare. It. Like this bed is is big. <laughs> like that's kind of why I wanted a bigger uh, a, a bigger bed so I can fit bigger batteries. Um, I'd probably go up to a 5,000 milliamp hour battery maybe later on in life, uh, just so I can get a little bit longer flight time, probably closer to like uh, 12, 13 minutes and with like rough flying. And again, my whole purpose for this whole thing was to keep it relatively cheap um, because this is not a quad that most people are going to be using at all times. It's not a quad that I'm going to be using at all times. So the the you know the price that I wanted it um, I, I couldn't get with the pre-built that's why I built it and I kept the price uh, under 280 I believe total um, and then some few knickknacks like the 3d printed stuff uh, I'm not including that in the price because that it comes with 3d printed stuff like it, it literally comes with 3d printed stuff with the frame um, and that was just me being picky uh, with wanting like darker like the dark theme uh, to be uh, consistent throughout the whole thing. I believe that's it. That, I believe that covers pretty much everything. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Um, I know this was kind of a relatively long video, but I kind of wanted to go in depth as to why I chose certain parts for this build. Um, and I was pretty excited to build this thing. It's great. It's monster. It's huge. <laughs> and it's kind of uh, intense actually seeing the thing uh, uh, being flown around. Um, but uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, uh, you know, a uh, great quad. Uh, I think seven inches uh, is definitely, definitely 
um, an option uh, that people should uh, should kind of dive deeper into because it's so much fun to fly this thing. Like you don't have to uh, move your throttle more than like 50% before like the thing kind of starts flying to the moon. Uh, like it's great. It's a very smooth, steady cruiser. Um, and uh, it's great. <laughs> I have all the links uh, to the stuff that I mentioned uh, for the build uh, in the description below. And uh, yeah, hope you liked this video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.